hey guys welcome back in today's video we will be covering the one of the interesting topic of execution engine with respect to mule 4.3 we will be covering thread pools and the configuration in this particular video so stay tuned for the exciting journey so execution engine within mule 4.3.0 i have specified 4.3.0 as a specific because there are some changes with respect to thread pool as we compare from any version lower than 4.3 so mule runtime engine implements a reactive execution engine and it is being tuned out for non-blocking and async operations so the basic uh, idea behind it is to uh, set the execution engine in the optimum state of performance and there are basically three processing types cpu light blocking io and cpu intensive so it basically depends upon what type of workload types are there and mule will uh, tune for different workloads so it is being done automatically and we don't have to manage the thread pools uh, out of the box in order to achieve optimum performance levels instead of that mule introspects the available resources such as memory and cpu cores and all the other uh, performance related uh, uh, bars which are being already set up by uh, MuleSoft engineering team and it is working perfectly fine in most of the scenarios and in in one of the few scenarios only it requires some manual changes so the task orientation execution model enables us to take the advantage of non-blocking io at high concurrency levels transparently and we don't have to um, change any um, threading strategy manually out of the box so a lot of burden is already off from the uh, developer side and since this engine is very sensitive and i must say it's very intelligent in nature so a lot of auto uh, performance tuning is being already handled within the mule engine itself let's talk more about the uh, processing types so there are three uh, different categories which we have uh, identified so the source of the flow and the each event processor it must execute in a thread that is taken from one of the three centralized thread pools what are these three uh, thread pools it is cpu light cpu intensive and blocking io cpu light any thread or any task which takes less than 10 milliseconds of time it is being categorized under cpu light and it is being considered at that it will never block uh, in nature Whereas CPU intensive, if there is any task which is taking more than 10 milliseconds, then it is being considered as partial non-blocking task. And clock time, if we consider from the CPU perspective, it is uh, anything less than 20% of the clock time. If it is being blocked, then that particular task is being categorized under CPU intensive category. Now the last one and the most important one is the blocking IO. Blocking IO is uh, is such one like uh, which is expecting a request and the response out of it so it could be uh, a database uh, select query as simple as that basically it waits on the thread for the completion of io operation so it is being uh, categorized under blocking io so in nutshell there are three uh, thread pools cpu light cpu intensive and blocking io in the same uh, increasing uh, priority or increasing nature of blocking cpu light being the least blocking in nature and blocking io being the highest in the order so all three are managed by mule runtime and shared across all applications which are being deployed to that runtime a running mule application will pull thread from each of these pools such as the event passes through its processor consequence of this is that a single flow may run in multiple threads and mule 4 optimizes the execution of a flow to avoid unnecessary thread switches so uh, there are certain scenarios in which if there is a cpu intensive thread is already running and there is a next immediate uh, cpu light or any uh, non blocking or i must say cpu light uh, logger activity is there so it will continue to uh, execute the logger activity in the cpu intensive itself so as to avoid this unnecessary thread switch whereas if there is already a cpu intensive going on and we and uh, 
or we, we can say there is a CPU light is already running, but all of a sudden we see uh, there is a uh, data mapper or a database related uh, pilot is being there, then there will be a change of or a switch of thread will uh, take this. Now let's talk about the HTTP thread pools. The mule for HTTP model uses Grizzly uh, under the covers. So Grizzly is basically uh, divided into two categories, shared and the dedicated. So we will be covering more about it. Uh, basically, it counts for HTTP listener and the HTTP uh, requester. So Grizzly needs selector thread pools need to be configured and Java NIO has the concept of selector threads. These check the state of NIO channels and create and dispatch events when they arrive. So event will arrive as the HTTP listener level and it will be accepted by HTTP requester. So in other words, requester selector poll for response event only. Okay. And uh, HTTP requester will be uh, like uh, the HTTP listener, they will share the one pool for the HTTP listener. So it is it is talking about the two different categories of shared and dedicated, which we will be covering in one of our demo sessions as well. But uh, the essence here is HTTP thread pools are categorized for HTTP listener and HTTP requester under the Grizzly uh, shared and dedicated threads. So thread pools. So we will be discussing more about in the demo session. Now, how the thread pool is being sized. Okay, so we have covered about CPU light intensive blocking IO and we slightly touched about Grizzly shared and dedicated. Shared is for HTTP listener and dedicated is for the HTTP requester. Now, what are the minimum and the maximum and under what condition it is being applied? So CPU light, all, the, all these thread pools are uh, having the minimum thread pool size of the number of cores and light intensive and in io it gets uh, calculated or starts when the mule engine is getting started is getting started up and grizzly it is being uh, getting impacted when the first app using http listener or deployment of each app using http requester is getting uh, initiated or during the deployment time so having said that so having said that, uh, what is the maximum thread pool size which can be allocated to these thread categories? The only main difference will lie about the blocking IO. As you can see, there is a much uh, calculation being going on, which is being calculated at the runtime memory minus 245760 divided by 5120 bytes. And rest of the things are in the terms of cores. It is a multiple of twice in case of CPU light and intensive, whereas Grizzly, it is plus one of the cores. Okay, so it is it is it is like uh, within the every time whenever there is an increment from minimum to the next level, it is being incremented by plus one. Okay, we will we will try to cover this as well in our uh, uh, demo sessions. So the next one is uh, an example. If we are having a two core CPU with one gig of RAM, then CPU light it will go to the two times uh, uh, two times for the maximum uh, size two cross cores okay and minimum is uh, the number of cores cpu is intensive also follow the same uh, suit uh, for blocking io it's two because the number of uh, cores and the max is being calculated and max is being calculated using this formula so 2 plus uh, mem memory is 1 gig minus 245760 divided by 5120. So it will uh, give us somewhere around 151. The next one is for Grizzly. Grizzly is for uh, 2 as the minimum and the max will be core plus 1. So this is being applicable for both dedicated and the shared uh, Grizzly thread pools. The next one is the thread pool schedule assignment criteria. How we decide a particular event processor will lie under which scheduler uh, thread pool. So as we discussed already, but to just to uh, reaffirm the same, CPU intensive will include data weave and scripting module related event processes, blocking IO. It will include all uh, blocking IO operation like DB related operations or uh, Salesforce queries as well. 
and the transactional scope jms and all the things grizzly shared will include only http listener whereas grizzly dedicated will include http requester cpu lite it is being used for uh, all other event processor scopes or routes where there is a handoff between one uh, processor to the next event processor for example from http listener to the logger so this transition between the uh, listener to logger it will be uh, done by cpu lite okay now the next thing is about threading and over thread pool and pro actor pattern so this thread pool of uber is being introduced only in this uh, 4.3 version of uh, mule execution engine and it is being shared across all the apps in the same mule instance at a startup mule introspects the available resources like memory cpu heap size and all the things in the system and tunes automatically the environment where the mule is running uh, mule is running like mule engine is running this algo was established through the performance testing of multiple rounds and this particular setting is being set in most for the most of the cases it will remain for the optimum performance so uh, even there is a disclaimer from the mules of vendor side like uh, there should uh, it is not being recommended to change the used pool strategy nor to change the configuration values and the configuration is global and affects the entire mule runtime instance not only a specific application so it is being recommended like we have to perform load testing and with all uh, application which are being involved in real life scenarios to validate any change in threading if you are uh, going ahead with that uber thread pool allows mule to be efficient requiring significantly less number of thread switches and and uh, it is being connected with the memory footprint as well lesser number of uh, thread switch lesser number of uh, memory footprints will be there and your application and environment will remain light in weight and will uh, perform in efficient manner now what is this pro actor pattern pro actor pattern is a design pattern which is being uh, standard for any asynchronous execution according to this uh, design pattern tasks are classified into the categories that corresponding to the mule processing types and each task is submitted for execution to uber pool performance testing shows that proactor pattern leads to better performance even with the unique thread pool because it allows threads to return to the main loop more quickly allowing the system to continue to accept new work while the io tasks are blocked and waiting so idea here is to um, categorize the incoming event processors and to uh, categorize them into the specific uh, thread uh, strategies so whenever there is an active transaction all thread switches are suspended and event processor participating in the transaction are executed in the same thread so i will be covering this particular uh, part within uh, our demo session as well so configuration wise uh, whenever your mule uh, home is being set inside there it will be a conf folder and within the conf you can see schedulerpools.conf so schedulerpools.conf it will be specific for your local mule instance and uh, you can configure this or mule runtime scheduler dot scheduler pool strategy to set the different parameters for uber uh, unified scheduling strategy which is being by default and dedicated if you want to um, switch over to that one so uber uh, uh, scheduler pool strategy is default for uh, mule 430 and dedicated is for the other uh, versions of it of mule runtime but in most of the cases it is being calculated on the optimum values of cpu and memory under the different load and stress testing so you have to double check in case you want to switch or change any of the configurations now what are the things we can change in terms of uh, this scheduler uh, policy strategy so when you open this particular uh, 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 this file schedulerpools.com you will come to know about these four particular lines that is core size then the maximum size of it then the worker queue size and the thread keep alive time within milliseconds i think it is in milliseconds by default in 4.3 as i mentioned the very last line of here is like a scheduler pool strategy equal to uber so and this has been set and apart from that anything on 4.1.x or 4.2.x it is following the uh, 
the uh, dedicated uh, scheduler type. Let me try to show you this particular uh, file as well. So what I will do, I will go to my instance, maybe somewhere here. I will go to the show package contents. I will go to the contents of it. Uh, maybe Mac, not here. Uh, over here and configuration. I will look into something over here. Oh, it's not there. Sorry for that. Let's see what is there in this. Okay, okay. Let me show you. Give me a moment, guys. Let me try to look at my local mule run instance. So this is uh, over here and schedulerpools.com file is here. Let me try to open it. You can open it using any of the editors. So here you go and you will be able to see this particular line, right? Keep alive, worker size, the max and min values. It is being all configured over here. And see this, uh, this, uh, this is being commented out. So it's being Uber uh, being by default being set for 4.3. Let me show you this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on line number 18, you can see this scheduler pool strategy set as Uber. So there are rest of the things which are being related. You can play it around, but uh, again with a word of caution. So let's switch back to our PPT. So if you want to play around with dedicated scheduling strategy, uh, if you change the strategy from this, uh, uh, if you comment it out and set it to uh, maybe here only, if you set it to dedicated, it will start listening to dedicated uh, as the uh, scheduling strategy. So there are multiple uh, uh, you can say the parameters which you can uh, change as per your requirement like thread pool size, worker queue, core size, max size, worker queue size in case of IO, in case of CPU light and in case of CPU intensive. So dedicated take care of all these three uh, inner categories uh, like uh, CPU light, IO and intensive. Now, this strategy can also be set at the application level using this particular uh, uh, tag, scheduler pools, then pool strategy, whether it is Uber or you want to set it to dedicated, then the graceful shutdown, then these four parameters. These are pretty much same which we are doing at the uh, scheduler-pools.conf uh, property file, but it will be applicable for the entire mule uh, run instance, but this particular setting will be applicable only on an application specific. Similarly, you can uh, set it up for uh, dedicated. In case of dedicated, you have to specify for light, IO and intensive. So you can play around with the different uh, parameters here again. So similarly for the max pool size, Q size, keep alive, you can play for CPU light and intensive as well. Now the next thing is the custom thread pools. Uh, besides the unique uh, Uber thread pool, some components might create additional pools for a specific purpose and IO selectors. Uh, enables non-blocking IO. Each connector can create as many as required. And recurring task pools, some connectors are comp or components uh, might create specific pools to perform recurring tasks like uh, queue consumers, expiration monitors, something similar to that, internal, right? So recurring in nature. So there are uh, these customized thread pools are also there, NIO and recurring task pools. Now let's uh, uh, jump to the demo uh, part of it. The first one I will first explain on this slide and then I will go over to the Mule Studio or Anypoint Studio. This is a standard example which is being uh, suggested from the uh, docs.mulesoft.com as well as well as from their um, blog site. So I have taken this uh, screenshot from that particular article itself. 
so how to read it out okay so first of all try to understand there are four uh, there are five these thread pools being identified light intensive blocking io shared grizzly and dedicated grizzly and the lower part of it is the thread id that is in this green circle there is a number that counts for a thread id direction shows the uh, movement of thread this uh, traffic light along with a red point on it it shows blocking in nature if it is amber in color then it is a potentially blocking if uh, in order to identify a thread pool it is being marked in a different uh, oval shaped uh, um, figure and uh, this is to show the transition or the movement of activities now going back to this particular figure uh, http listener then there is a database select then logger data view logger and http requester so it starts and http requester ends uh, it so how it starts it starts with a cpu um, uh, it starts with a uh, shared grizzly for http listener and it hands over using this uh, cpu light uh, uh, thread and it there is a transition from http listener to a database select database select is a potentially blocking or uh, the complete blocking io is there so five this five uh, will set it down it for blocking io okay now this the next transition will be from database selector to the data view but there is a logger in between right so it will make sure that blocking io will be taking care of this logger as well okay so two uh, thread number two is starting from database select it will guide it to data view uh, component now data view component is uh, blocking is cpu intensive in nature as you can see on the uh, amber color traffic light so this 16 number thread it is coming uh, uh, used over here marking as it as a cpu intensive so entire data view operation will be using a cpu intensive thread pool after that there is a uh, thread switch from data view to the http requester logger activity will be covered by this uh, uh, cpu light thread okay so after that http requester will perform its task and it will use the shared uh, the dedicated grizzly to send back the response and it will again connect it back using this uh, uh, cpu light thread to connect back http requester and the next flow or basically the uh, HTTP listener. So in this way, this particular flow is uh, uh, working out. Let me go back to AnyPoint Studio and show you something over here. So this is the first part in which uh, there is a listener, there is a select, there is a logger, transformer, and logger again, and then HTTP request. In order to make sure I am able to see all the logs, I have added a debug uh, async logger. You can make this particular change in your log4j.xml uh, and you will be able to see all the details within the console. So let's start with the first one. I will uh, start this uh, project. Yes. It's a get operation based HTTP listener. Threads, okay. In the meanwhile, I am uh, I will open up my Postman uh, tool and uh, will set it up. So yeah, this one. It will take a couple of seconds to uh, start both of these applications. Let me quickly check. Okay, both are releasing out of different actions, so we are good. You can see a lot many debug, warn, and all the things are coming up. This is because we have set the async logger uh, level as debug. If I remain it, uh, uh, keep it like info only, then we will not be able to see the selector uh, uh, selector uh, nodes as well, the selector threads. 
so in order to enable that i have i have marked it as debug let me clear up the console and hit uh, it from postman i got the response back Let me clear this up once again and just want to make sure I am getting the fresh and the only required uh, locks. Got the response back. Okay, so let's let's copy paste this entire thing and I will go to this uh, editor. I will paste it over here and we'll try to uh, make some sense out of it. Okay, so now it's starting from the CPU light because uh, the first transition is from HTTP listener to the uh, to the database select. Okay, so just holding this CPU light and I need to take care of this third number basically. So uh, this is being terminated and after that the next thread is getting initiated that is blocking blocking because we are having a database select so here you can see this blocking is being there after that it is trying to establish the uh, ssl it is not there so checking a lot many uh, debug statements after that it is trying to execute on this particular query which i have set in this uh, database select id2 okay so it is now calculating, now ch changing the object to atom string, um, then transformation, then this logger. Okay, so this particular logger, it is printing, there it goes and the payload, there it goes and after that, iterator, uh, the managed cursor iterator provider is being set it up. After that, it has covered till here and there is a uh, transform message. This is uh, CPU intensive in nature. So now the thread um, switch, switch to CPU intensive thread pool. And now it is trying to change or transform the message. Um, let me try to show that thing. So here it goes. It is It has converted after the transform and within the same uh, CPU intensive this logger will be covered and the transform payload here I am printing transform payload and the payload itself so it is printing this one and after that there is CPU light which is connecting back from request and it will be ping uh, response back to our console and the CPU light is there the last one and it is being terminated finally so this is in exactly in sync what we have seen over here. So you can cross check all the these particular steps like CPU light is there in between the eighth, eighth, okay, this eighth handover from listener to database select. It is a uh, CPU light. Then there is a blocking between database till database, from database till database for CPU intensive. 16, 16 thread IDs for CPU intensive. After that, uh, there is a um, one big uh, CPU light ranging up to HTTP requester. So here you can see the CPU intensive, which is transforming all the data. And finally, we are terminating the thread. So this was the first part of this demo and I will try to cover this one more demo, which is about the transactional try. So this transactional try uh, is about a HTTP listener and after that all the rest of things are uh, under part of a transaction. So all these uh, particular things will be covered under a uh, blocking thread that is uh, blocking IO. So it starts with HTTP listener. HTTP listener is initiated using dedicated grizzly thread pool. And after that, there is a handover using this CPU light uh, 8. And after that, it starts the transactional try. And it's entire uh, blocking IO in nature. After that, the uh, 
CPU light will become uh, come back and it will uh, responsible for sending back the response. And uh, this is uh, all about we are trying to see in this demo. So I will go back quickly to the console. I will clear this up and uh, we'll hit again um, from postman. I got the response back. I will copy paste this console again and we will try to make some sense out of it. Okay, let me word wrap it. So it started with uh, transaction blocking from it is covering from right from here because we don't have a logger in between that's why I'm not able to see a CPU light uh, in nature but uh, it, it is showing from the blocking at the beginning of the transaction it will go on till till the very end of it which, which shows like there will be only a major single uh, blocking thread but in the background there are uh, references to the CPU light as well which is uh, making sure there is a handover between HTTP listener to the database select okay, let me try to hit it once again and let's see Okay, let's go back. Okay, again, all blocking I use, blocking I use, blocking I use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe if I have a um, logger in between, I will be able to see the CPU light as well. The eighth. Uh, thread over here but uh, the rest of things are pretty much in sync so this covers up the um, basic uh, thread management or the execution engine with respect to mule 4.3 i hope you like this video and thanks for watching thank you